Well, good morning, guys. Hope you're all doing well. We're back in the lakes today because we've come back to a place that we went to last time when I was reviewing the uh, Fujifilm lens. So I wanted to kind of explore the area a little more. Kind of halfway up at this point, so we're going to make our way back up this hill right up onto the summit and there were some lovely birch trees and a few uh, dry stone walls and things like that with the Langdales off in the distance last time so yeah we'll use that as a backdrop and see what we can find today so I'll get a bit further on and then we'll walk through what we're going to shoot So guys, we've made it to the top now and we've just come to a similar sort of location as we did last time we were here. Um, and really what I want to do is try and pick out the details that I did similarly last time and see if we can improve on the composition at all and see if we can make it a little bit different. Now obviously it's going to be different because this time of year we haven't got the heather in bloom so we're not actually including so much foreground. We're going closer in with a longer lens to pick out more of the light and everything hitting the hills in the distance there. But I think it's quite an interesting shot to kind of, or an interesting technique to revisit a location and, and try and improve on that composition or at least do something different to what you were doing last time. Right, so hopefully what you should see, I'll just press record on the back of here, is that I'm using the strip pano again, and what I'm, well, the reason for that is because I want to kind of stay on that intersection where the valleys cross over at the bottom. So I'm using the strip pano because it works really well for that. Now, what you're gonna see in the back here is there's absolutely no light at all, but just before there was nice light in the valley and where, where it was intersecting, all that was illuminated and it had quite a nice 3D effect about it. I'll show you where my focus point is. It's just off on the third there. Just off on the bottom third, off to the left hand side. And I want that mountain in the background. You can probably just see it on the right hand side. It's almost on the top right third. Now it's almost completely covered now, but I want that in the frame. It's a really important part of the shot. So I'm gonna have to wait for that cloud to move and pass through a little bit and that light to come back in that valley and illuminate it, hopefully it will. Um, yeah, just a really simple shot. I'm at a 40th of a second, F16, ISO 100. I'll wait around for the light to hit again and when it, hopefully when it comes back, this is the shot. I was actually thinking about the fact that this is really important sometimes just to come back to these locations that you've visited before and try different compositions again and it's also really important to try and pick an area and just kind of focus in on that area spend time on it instead of just turning up to one place and thinking right that's a shot I'm going to go off and find something else try and stick with an area and see what you can actually get out of it I think it's quite invaluable to be honest because it makes you kind of see different shots that you might not have seen before. It makes you spend more time in a place and therefore if you're spending more time in it you get to know it better, you get to know where the light's hitting, you get to know what the weather patterns are in an area. I think it's really important to do that. So picking a high vantage point like this is really important because it means you can almost stand in one spot and get 360 views all the way around. And as the light's coming in from behind you over there, it's illuminating parts of the hills behind us. You can see it's happening now. There's little sections that you can just pick out. And this long lens is really helping me do that, going right in at 200 mil a lot of the time and getting close detail shots. This kind of area really lends itself rather than to the, the wide angle shot. Days like this are really great for the long lens because you can get right in tight details and just, as I said before, just sitting around waiting for light to happen around you. So I want to take you to the back of the camera now again, guys. Let's press record again. 
So what I'm actually focusing on just above there, you can see the light hitting the tops of those hills right up in the distance there. And it's absolutely gorgeous because you've got the different layers of the clouds above. And then every now and then the light's actually hitting one of those tops. So I've just kind of isolated one of those peaks. Strip panel again, although I've taken a couple of square crops as well. And uh, yeah, I've just got, my, got those hills along the bottom third of the section because I actually like those layers in the cloud above because I think they tell a bit of the story as well. So got that centralised, focus points in the middle there. Again, I'm at a 30th of a second, F16, ISO 100, and I'm just slightly under underexposing it, just in case any of those white clouds above there just blow out that little bit. Probably not, but just to be on the safe side, that's what I'm doing. So, let's grab this shot. So I'll just show you the back of the screen again, I'll press record. And what's really nice about this location is you can just keep spinning around and taking shots as the light changes. And what I've got on the back of the screen now, which you should see, is a square crop. And basically all I've got is layers, there's no real light back there as such, it's just that there's layers of the mountains beyond. And there's actually a bit of a rainbow coming through where, I'm, uh, where I've got the camera pointed. Um, so I'm focusing on the three layers of the mountains there. From the bottom section of this image you can see the first layer where I've got the focus point on and then the second layer goes back and then the third layer and I'm trying to kind of build that into half of the image and the second half of the image is basically going to be sky. Um, I've got my focus point more or less in the middle of the lower third. With this one I'm at a 30th of a second F16 at ISO 100 again and I'm just slightly underexposing and I'll grab this shot So we must have been up here around about six hours or so now, just in this one spot and literally just turning around every few minutes just to capture the light that's happening around us. And it's been quite liberating to be honest because usually when you go out it's it's kind of, you get into a habit of just wanting to uh, get as much as possible and visit as many places as possible to get, to get different shots. But actually, if you can stick in one location and get a bit of height, you can get numerous different shots from the same place. Definitely worth getting somewhere like this that you can kind of spend a bit of time on and actually focus on just fine-tuning compositions and finding something different in the location that you're actually in. So we've seen it through to the bitter end. Sunset's happened now and it's, the light is actually starting to dim now. But it's been a really good experiment just staying in this one location and seeing what we can come up with. Really enjoyed the freedom of just actually concentrating on this one place. And it actually adds to your creativity a bit because you have to kind of think a little bit outside the box. Because obviously there's only so many um, different things you're going to get from it. But it's just a case of looking around you and, and basically seeing what you can come up with seeing if there's something new and also just seeing what happens when the light changes watch what areas of the landscape lights up and it's really good for that so if the light does happen in the future and you want to come back to a location you can come back and you know what's generally going to happen
Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this week's video. Thanks very much for joining me. Check out my website for the uh, workshops and everything we have going on. Cheers for watching and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>